the last few months, I've been uh, running a bit of an experiment. I mean, we are computer scientists, after all, right? But I don't see us using any of the scientific method in our algo classes, so I took the initiative. But my research question or hypothesis, I don't know shit about science, I'm sorry. The question I wanted to answer, it was, is it easier to get a job than an internship? Because most students wouldn't know, right? Because most students in college were sort of just grinding these internships all day and we've never really applied for a full-time job. Now, I'm not talking about a full-time job in like an equal playing field. It's not like a... I don't mean a full-time job at Google as opposed to an internship at Google. Internships at prestigious companies like Fang and Unicorns versus getting a full-time job at some random startup. These full-time startups, most of them still pay six figures and there's a lot more of them. So I don't know how many like top internship programs they are, but there are thousands of these startups that are hiring people. So I wanted to know that as a college student, someone who hasn't even graduated yet, could I get one of these startup jobs? It's October 6th, 2020. I applied to like two or 300 places last year for an internship, got one offer, and then it got resigned because of COVID. So this year, um, I've applied to about 60 places so far, and I've got no interviews. I don't know what's happening. I'm just not getting any interviews. I wonder if it would be easier to just get an actual job. And the only thing that makes me, you know, think, oh, I can't get a job yet. I, don't, I haven't graduated yet. But that's such a stupid mindset. There's so many people that don't even go to college and they get these jobs. Uh, I haven't applied to any jobs yet, but I'm gonna start applying today. Yeah, let's see, let's call this mission job easier than internship question mark and let's see if I can get a job. Now, since then, I actually ended up getting an internship. So I have recently uh, stopped this experiment with getting a full-time job because I don't really want one anymore. And I kind of want to share my experience and my results and if I think it is easier to get a full-time job than to get a prestigious internship as a college student. So I'm just gonna lay out the numbers. So I've been applying to internships for about a year and a half and I've in total sent at least 400 applications. And in terms of the interviews, not like online assessments, but like interview interviews, I've gotten like six interviews. That is an awful, awful conversion rate. For startups, here's what I did. I went on AngelList, not a plug for AngelList, um, but that's just the only site that I actually did this for. And also, I didn't really put much effort in this. I just made an AngelList account. I just slapped random projects on there. I didn't even take time to make sure I had a nice profile. I just slapped it all on there. And then I applied to, I don't know how many companies I applied to, I didn't track it but it was really easy to apply because it, it was like one or two clicks. Like I would just get a list of companies and just just one click apply. And I just did that for like 30 minutes or something. So if I had to guess, I'd say maybe like three or 400 companies. But I'm, once again, I'm not really sure. And I only did this once. I did this once at the beginning of my hunt and I never really applied again. I got 15 interviews. 15. <laughs> that is way, way more than internships. So from that information, we can gather getting a job is easier. But it gets more complicated than that because the interview process is a lot different than the internship process. For the internship process, they don't really expect much from you. If anything, they just expect you to be very good at algorithms. And as a college student, algorithms are kind of what we're learning in school. So being good at algorithms, you know, we're kind of like uniquely place to be good at algorithms as opposed to maybe a working professional who has been out of college for so long if they don't deal with algorithms day to day then their mind might not be so keen on algorithms but as college students that's all they really expect from us they don't really ask us uh, system design questions or they don't ask us like language specific questions or framework specific questions for startups it's all fair game you have no idea what you're going to be asked so that's exactly what happened to me i got asked so many fields of questions. Uh, for example, I'd say most of these startups asked me a systems design question in the interviews. And up until this point, I actually didn't know any systems design at all really because they don't expect that from college students. But I did want to pass these startup interviews. So I studied so much system design. I'm pretty happy that I did that because now when I apply as a new grad or whatever, 
I'm going to be very good at systems design, I think, since I've learned it so early. And learning systems design was also super interesting. Like, I feel like in my personal projects, I'm just so much more equipped to create, like, things at scale now. Hi. Oh shit, that's loud. <laughs> that's my earphones. I actually need some advice. What's up? Um, I'm about to cry. Why? Because Caleb is so dumb. What did okay. you do? Well, out of my 15 interviews, which I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even do all of them. I was getting called for an interview and it was 10 p.m. and I was on my bed. I could either answer the phone and accept this interview, or I could just ignore the call and not work for this company. And I took that second option. So what does that really say about me? I don't know. My lack of a degree. The question of college did come up, and I would, you know, be honest, be like, yeah, I haven't graduated yet. I'd say almost every single interviewer, their advice to me was to drop out. <laughs> like, they'd be like, like, they wouldn't care about my degree. They'd be like, oh, that's fine. I mean, honestly, if you joined, do you think you'd be willing to just drop out and work for us full time? So not a single one of these people even cared if I had a degree or not. There were also some interviews that were so sketchy. Here's the thing. You don't really deal with just massively sketchy interviews when you're interviewing with like legitimate companies. But these startups, they can really throw you some fucking weird ass interviews. Like I had this one company that I applied to and it was like the listing was a six figure job. And then the dude started talking about uh, saying that it's an unpaid internship. And I told him to eat a dick because it's not. I have my YouTube channel on my, my AngelList profile. And I think that may be one of the reasons why I got so many interviews because they want me to like donate clout to them because they're a small startup. They need that like new audience or whatever. And this one dude, he was interviewing me for a software engineering role, right? That's what I was applying to. But in the middle of the interview, he started talking about, uh, hey, I'm going to be candid with you. You know, we're kind of looking for a senior engineering role, but... I think what you've done here with like, you know, sponsor, like affiliates and advertising and all that shit, I think we can bring you on for a project for that. Basically what it kind of just sounded like is, hey, can we use your YouTube channel to advertise our startup? That's what exactly what it sounded like to me. I just hung up in the middle of him talking, like mid sentence, I just hung up. And then I got an email right after like, hey, I think, I think Zoom cut out. But yeah, would you be excited for that? I'm like, nah, dude. Like don't tell me you're gonna bring me on for an engineering role and then just have it equate to you using me for my YouTube channel. I also had this one awful interview from this dog shit company named Bebot. I mean, this is the worst fucking interview I've ever had. Name and shame, these people are such fucking morons, it almost blows my mind. They are the most pretentious, idiotic people. So I had a final round interview with them, and the entire interview consisted of just the most trivial, dumb ass things. There were also some really great interview experiences. There was this job with data that I really, really wanted. And it was uh, it was three stages for interviews. The first one was, uh, I guess, an online assessment and that was algorithms, nailed it. The second interview was, it was an algorithms question, but it didn't seem like one. Like make a get request here, gather this data and stuff like that. And then parse through the JSON. So thankfully, I actually knew how to do that shit. So I was able to do that. But after you got the data, it actually became a lead code question. It became a graph theory question that uh, I actually also ended up knowing how to do. So the gathering the data, doing the graph theory shit, nailed the interview, and I got a final round. The final round, I think, was three or four hours. I had to meet every single person on this team, and they all had to interview me separately, which has got to be expensive for a small startup to interview people for this long. So I thought there can't be many people they're interviewing. So I felt really good. And after the interview, I felt like I did amazing. To this day, I thought that was the best interview experience I've ever had. And then the next day I got a rejection, which hurts a lot. I still don't know what happened. I asked them, you know, why am I, why did I get rejected? But they said they're kind of looking for more of a senior engineering role. But here's the thing that really fucked with me. At the end of my interview, the, the three hour interview, the CTO is literally telling me that he doesn't know where to put me on the spectrum of junior to senior. Cause he said, cause my lack of experience, I'd be a junior. But he said like through interviewing me, he can see that my skills are actually more aligned with the senior. Like that's what he told me. And he kept implying that I'm getting the job. And the next day I get rejected. 
I had this one final round interview where it was all algorithms because he couldn't interview me on React. The job was in React. I don't really know any React. But the guy was like, oh, no, it's fine. Um, so he asked me like 30 minutes of algorithms and 30 minutes of system design. And for the algorithms, it was I was it was unmatched. I nailed like I nailed the algorithm section so hard. Like he's never seen it before. Cause he's like a front end developer and he doesn't really do much like lead codes. So I'm pretty sure I'm better than the interviewer was. But then every single time he would ask me a question like, So do you have any experience with React? Or I have to be like, Nope, none. But I can learn it fast. He seemed satisfied with that, but I got rejected. So at the end, out of my fifteen interviews, I got a Z, you know, job offers. <laughs> Too much Greg Doucette. But yeah, I didn't get any I didn't get any jobs. Now, on one hand, you could, you could be like, okay, well, so getting a job is harder because, you know, out of all those interviews, you didn't get an offer. But on the other hand, I've been applying for full-time jobs for like a month, and I've been applying for internships for a year and a half. So I feel like if I just kept applying, then I could, um, I probably could have gotten one of these job offers. So yeah, that's my time. Let me know in the comments below. Do you guys think it's easier to get a full-time job at a startup in college? Or do you guys think it's easier to get a internship at like a prestigious top company? I ran this experiment. I guess my results are still ambiguous, but yeah, just let me know what you think and bye-bye.